Hey Internet, this is Gunter with Many Mishaps Games, and today I'm going to be showing off my new camera arm, as well as uh, going through my painting process a little bit. So, a couple of days ago, I got this amazing camera arm in the mail from a curious watcher and no other designation so uh, an anonymous gifter along with the request to learn about my process and so I'm going to use the the arm with my my painting today and as well as the you can see my process here for drawing uh, minis for a random challenges so I'm going to do a random mini today so we draw out six the first one here is going to be Halfling Fighters. We'll paint either one of those if we get those drawn. And then uh, Elf, another WizKids looks like mage there. Looks like a Catkin Warrior or Executioner, Big Axe. That one's metal, I think. Another metal one, this one's from Bones Legends. It's a Swamp Shambler. We've got a little tiny Captain America. He seems to be wanting to get painted in a lot of different challenges. He gets pulled out. And then a Dwarven Fighter, also from Liz Kids. So then I will take the six minis that we drew out. I'll clear out some of my paint stuff here. And then I'll roll a D6. And that'll be the one that we're gonna we're gonna paint up. So there it is. It's gonna be that halfling fighter. So um, yep, I got my scissors, I got my double-sided tape, so for all the minis that I paint, I always stick them on a bottle cap, um, that way I can keep my fingers from getting paint on them. I have also a paint handle from a Kickstarter I supported a long time ago that is standard pop bottle cap size. So the caps can screw down onto the paint handle as well. I don't always use it, and in the case of the Halfling Fighter, the miniature is so extra miniature that the paint handle ends up kind of getting in the way, and then I'll just hold the cap instead. So I'll just pull that other side of the... So next up, we're going to set up the wet palette again. I don't always use a wet palette. Um, unless I know I'm going to be able to paint at length. So if I do a dry palette, it usually means I'm doing one or two colors for a very short amount of time that I'm dedicating. And then uh, in videos like this, I'll use the wet palette, uh, which both are just a piece of uh, stationery uh, flipped to the not inked side. And then put on the paper towels so the paper towels will get wetted and uh, and I have a half wet the paper and I do that so that um, I can choose since I know that some of the paints are more watery and some of them are are needing to be watered down that I can place my my drops of paint in a way that they get the exact amount of water that they need. So I'll usually do this where I do a big blob of water on both ends and then just a little bit in the middle so that my tops and bottoms of the wet palette are dry. Um, and as that soaks through the paper, it lets me kind of pick, um, again, how, how wet I need that paint to be. So I also really like this camera angle because it allows me to see the camera actually while from overhead I can look and make sure that my miniature is still in the camera view here so like when I pull it back to to paint or inspect it or do whatever I can tell relatively quickly that I've left the shot and I can make sure it comes back into the shot so so I really like uh, from other painting that I've done. I really like combining the green, dark green, with the gunmetal to create this sort of mithril metallic green. 
and so that's what I'm going to be using for the armor today for the halfling. And I usually end up doing a drop, the smallest drop I can, and a lot of times, unless I'm painting something big or I'm doing a lot at once, a lot of times it's still, there's some amount of waste there, so I try to um, sort of dab the paint on the paper as it's coming out, and that kind of reduces the, the drop size. Um, but I only need a very tiny amount of green for that whole drop of gunmetal for it to get that greenish shine, a green hue. Otherwise the green very quickly overpowers the metallic and you just end up with more green. So as far as a painting system goes, I don't I don't have a set thing that I do all of the time. Um, I tend to push paint up against edges um, and I know that that can reduce the life of your brushes and stuff and um, and that, but that is for me the best and sometimes only way for the amount of dexterity that I have to get into the finer spaces and do things like the face um, but usually for these first couple of base coats, I don't worry too much if I'm getting on the uh, surfaces that I don't want paint on because we'll come back later and, and kind of clean up edges is sort of my last step. So on this one, I'm going to be doing green for the whole set of armor. I toyed with the idea of changing the color for the helmet, but I... The metallic green is such a kind of distinct color that it would have looked like it wasn't part of a set and I wanted it to be all, all uniform there. And then when I'm using the metallic paints I generally don't feel those areas are gained by me trying to do highlights because uh, the highlight ends up just being a big blob of light or white paint that completely undermines the, the look of it. But here, the regular light from the room um, picks up all those metallic shine pretty well. And then I'll, I tend to do more coats and paint thinner on the small extremities um, because I don't want those helmet points or sword points or fingers to get filled in with paint and lose too much of the detail or in the case of the spikes like on the helmet turn into kind of bulbs that are sticking out of whatever the weapon or, or piece of armor is so this um, after I've got this coat of metal I'm going to be going back and taking a little water to that green and doing a wash so that it gives me some of the shadows for the armor which this little halfling has got chain armor which turns out really cool with the washes it really pulls those little and that's another thing you want to be careful on not having your paint be too thick because that'll just you just end up with sheer flat armor instead of the chain there. Okay, so I decided to do the sword as sort of a magical silver. So I'm going to paint the sword silver, and then I'm going to go back and add some blue uh, to kind of give it that uh, feeling of magic. So I'll do that here in a little bit. So just in the last couple of weeks with this camera arm for you guys uh, being able to see and I picked up a pair of reading glasses for me to be able to see and I've got the, the new paint brushes from Firebox 64 that have been amazing. Um, really just am grateful and couldn't do any of the art stuff without you guys. I got the, the paints that I'm using were a gift uh, back in the end of September and so that's when I started painting 
so it's still still all fairly new to me but it's um it's so much fun and and hopefully you guys are enjoying that uh getting to ride along with that all right i got them um, some brown boots and i re-gray the base was already gray but i i used the other gray as sort of a, a light change or get some shadows in there so as of right now that's pretty much my system for doing painting when i have the miniature space sometimes i will try doing some highlighting and the most of the miniatures are too small to do a lot with layering um, especially because the if the paint is wet enough to do blending then it also pulls the new layers of paint to the edges of the, the faces so that's uh, something that we're working on and getting better at and then uh, yeah things like like edge highlighting and and that are still still a big part of the process and washes and um, and a piece like this I might go back and do a brown wash on the boots and and that so but generally once I've got that skin tone in the face I don't uh, if the natural shadows make it look like it has eyes then I leave it otherwise I'll do a, a wash uh, to try and get the details of the face to come out as well so that's my process I hope you enjoy the new angle as much as I enjoyed using that photo arm and um, thank you again to curious watcher and uh, you guys will get to see a lot more of this angle for the camera moving forward so We'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks, Internet.